Hi everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel, JKT. Thank you so much for watching. So as you know, our channel is for giving tips for parents who have children that are deaf or hard of hearing, as well as teachers. So thanks, I'm Caroline. I'm Jonna. And I'm Tara, and we're all undergraduate students at the College of New Jersey, aspiring to be teachers of the deaf. So we've been looking at our comments for the past couple weeks about the, our subscribers, and they're interested in learning about self-advocacy skills. So today's video is about self-advocacy, why it's important for your child to learn it, and how you can support them as they become more independent. Let's start with what self-advocacy is. It's best described as a person representing themselves and advocating and showing for their needs. It's really important for people that use their technology to be independent and be able to express themselves and what they need. Um, when it comes to children who are deaf or hard of hearing, it's really important to, self, to start self-advocacy skills from a young age, especially if they're using some technology like a hearing aid, cochlear implant, or FM system. Oftentimes, young children do not understand the importance of routinely wearing their amplification, which can be frustrating for parents. As a parent, it is important to remember the three P's, persistence, patience, and positive attitude. Persistence involves you, the parent, encouraging your child to keep going. No matter how many times their device falls off, stops functioning, or is just taken off by your child, smile, pick it up for them, and put it back on. Make sure the child knows that it is not up for discussion. Eventually, your child will come to understand the importance of their amplification and how much better their life is when they are wearing it. The next P is patience. It's important for parents to understand that it takes time, not only for the child, but also for the family to adjust to the use of new technology in the home. Your child may not like the amplification now, but it is a phase and your child gets, as your child gets older, they will come to realize why you constantly encourage them to wear their devices in the first place. Finally, it is important for parents to have a positive attitude. If you have a positive attitude towards your child's hearing loss and the use of amplification, then it will be easier for your, your child to accept a new routine. Educate your child when you're checking their battery, changing the checking device, or charging and cleaning it. Explain to your child why they should take it off or why they have to definitely have them on for certain activities like watching a movie. Parents serve as teachers to their children when they play an important role in their development and their self-advocacy skills. You as a parent know your child the best. You know what they need and you know when they need it. Share your knowledge with them. Teach them to advocate for themselves. Great, so let's start by answering some of your questions. Anonymous Mama writes, I am concerned about whether or not my child is demonstrating enough self-advocacy skills. Should I include them in his IEP? Well, that's an interesting question. Tara, what do you think? I think it truly depends on your child. If he or she is demonstrating self-advocacy, like letting his teachers know when his FM system, hearing aid, or cochlear implant isn't working, then he may not need self-advocacy skills listed on his IEP. Remember that the purpose of an IEP is to list goals that you as a parent and other members of the IEP team believe are essential to your child receiving an appropriate education. If you do decide to add self-advocacy goals to your child's IEP, be sure that they are specific. An example of a specific IEP goal could be the child will raise his or her hand or approach the teacher if he or she forgets to put on the microphone for the FM system. Tara, that's a great answer. I totally agree. I think you need to make sure that your son is speaking up for himself, especially when it comes to school. He knows his, his technology better than everyone, and if his teachers don't know there's a problem, then he's not going to be able to get the help he needs. So, Anonymous Mama, we hope that you were, we were able to answer your question. Great. Let's move on to another one from I Love My Kids. How do I know if my child is able to advocate for herself? That is a really important question to ask. Of course, you can always practice impromptu role playing with your child and ask questions and see how they would respond. Or you could set up situations, we call them sabotage, to see if they would speak up for themselves in situations they don't think they're supposed to. It's kind of like an impromptu like little challenge and see if they can speak up for themselves. Yeah, that's a great idea. Another thing you might be able to do is like when you're in the car, blast the radio loud and try talking to them to see if your, your child would be able to say like, can you lower that down, lower it so I can hear you. This way you're testing them to see if they're starting to gain the advocacy skills that they need. Great answer. I think that's very helpful to these parents. Um, I love my kids. We hope that answers your question. We have another question here from Mama Bear. Why is self-advocacy important for my child? I think the biggest thing with self-advocacy is making sure a child is looking out for themselves. As a parent, you cannot always be there for them to make sure that they have everything they need to succeed. Oftentimes, people may not even be aware of a problem like a dead hearing aid battery or they're not using the FM system. But your child always knows when there's a problem and they can't hear, clear, hear clearly. 
You're so right, Tara. When these things happen, your child misses out on so much information because they can't speak up for themselves. Ensuring that your child has the ability to advocate for themselves, they'll have so much more access to language and communication. What do you think about this? I mean, I agree with both of you. I think that the child knows themselves the best. So if they have the ability and the confidence just to be able to say that my FM system is not on, it's crucial for them in the classroom because without that FM system on, they're missing so much information from their peers, from the teacher, mm -hmm. and it's not just a problem of not hearing, it's they're missing information. And you can't always be the voice of your child, so it's important that your child has a voice for themselves so their problem doesn't go unnoticed. Exactly. Self-advocacy is a, is a tool that is important for all children. This kind of leads into our next question. When should my child start learning and developing self-advocacy skills? I think it's important that your child starts learning self-advocacy skills immediately after they start using a new technology. There's different age-appropriate skills that your child will have the ability to master. They may seem like small steps, but every little step is a new skill that your child is learning. There can be checklists that can help you follow like the progression of self-advocacy skills, and there's even going to help you shed light on like how to use the technology and when it should be used. So self-advocacy is something that your child is going to continue to use and continue to improve on just so that their life is easier and they become a voice for themselves. And the more they speak for themselves, the better they are. That's a great answer, Jana. Thanks. Our last question for today is from Cool Dad 66 What are the positive outcomes of teaching my child self-advocacy? There are so many outcomes from teaching self-advocacy skills. It's a really important thing to teach just as any subject in school. The first thing that is that your child will have the maximum outcome from using their technology. By promoting independence, your child does not need to rely on adults to manage their own equipment. It sets them up for situations they may face later in life where they are the, their only resource. It gives them a sense of confidence in using their technology. By being a self-advocate, it promotes independence and self-confidence within your child. We hope that we've answered most of your questions about self-advocacy for your child. We know you may still have questions or want more information about self-advocacy, so we compiled a list of resources just for you. You can look in the below in the video description and there you'll find the links. We encourage you to read and look at them so that you can learn more about self-advocacy skills and you're ready to help your child gain his independence. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Bye! <laughs>